Hey guys, um, I kind of wanted to put out a short message. I think I'm going to start trying to make these shorter. About doubting God. It's not dead yet. The dreams, visions, things that he's shown you, they're alive, about to be birthed. Man child's coming forth. Pretty instant, guys. It's probably time for a Holy Ghost ruckus. We're wired for this day. The explosion just hadn't taken place yet. It is. Lord told me to be a watchman, so that's what I'm going to do. And we tried to creep in recently with, hey, you know, I'm just going to say it. <clears throat> Some things I thought were dealt with, and they weren't. I'll not, one day probably give you the details, but... You mean the whole story, you'd be like, well, no wonder you kind of acted and did in that area what you did. But I got to get to the bottom of it, guys. Where's the sin in my heart in it? Yeah. Could be hide behind the legitimacy of, of, of the situations and things that had happened to get me there. And so the yeah, enemy tried to put doubt. No, you can't say stuff now or do things or, because look what you did or didn't do. Man, I reposted this one post. It said, God didn't look inside the house to see who was worthy. He just looked on the doorpost for the blood of the lamb. None of us are worthy, guys. So don't let the enemy try to creep in. Fear, doubt, disbelief, unbelief. Things you did, circumstances, things other people did. Stuff, things. Don't. Do what God's telling you to do. Are you going to be right all the time? Probably not. But you should be a whole lot more than not. So, it's not time to doubt God. Children of Israel did it. They, you know. I watched this video from David Wilkerson about doubt, and it was really good. One of the ones was about Daniel. Sorry, I've got some indigestion. Um, it was about Daniel on the lines then, but the real miracle was there was people watching him. Probably maybe the unsaved people and King Darius and different people too. That he trusted in God. No matter what the circumstances seem like, seemingly even stacked against you, or whatever, you know, it's just, man. That's what I'm saying about that Holy Ghost ruckus. It's time to just, you know, what's he telling you to do? But you don't have to be offensive, abrasive, judgmental, dogmatic, problematic, and all that stuff either. But at the same time, you also need to speak the truth because you're going to stand. I'm going to stand. I'm the guy that's one of the watchmen. I have to say what I have to say because it's not you I'm going to stand before. I'm going to draw my last breath. It's him. But so some of the things he's showing me, I'm like, I still, I'm, I'm praying a lot about him because it's like, man, God, I don't really want to say it like that or do that or whatever. And, I'm one thing he even recently even told me I was like oh heck no God I'm not doing that and now I am <clears throat> but I've seen God God's hand moving in different things in different areas and things getting set up and put into place and it's like okay God so you just have to be obedient guys to what he's telling you to do one of the things took me years. I'm just gonna go ahead and say this one. Okay, it was about the abortion issue, okay? 
Look at the video though, because it's 20 minutes long, but it'll give you a lot of depth because we're quick to slap labels on people. It's all the debate and all the other garbage that's going on with it. It's time for the church to do something because that's what the Lord told me to drop the ball. But the first part, it wasn't very good. He said, this is how I see America concerning abortion. A bigger mass murderer than Adolf Hitler ever was. Man, God, that kind of hurt. Going on in my whole lifetime. You know? But at the end of it, there's a solution to it. Jesus always has a solution to it. And what he wants the church to do is a body. Because, you know, sin is sin, guys. It doesn't matter. That just sounds like a bigger one than others. It's not. <clears throat> all that all sin separates us from the love of Christ. And gives the, room, the enemy room to plant doubt. That's what he did in the Garden of Eden. Did God really say that? Why? Because he was trying to steal, kill, and destroy. He wanted to steal their time away from God. His main thing. He wants like they he wants to separate you from the shepherd, from the love of the Father, so he can kill you and destroy destroy you for all of eternity. The main goal. So I'll just doubt. Okay, so I'm gonna end with this. Um been on Several trips. Get them in prayer, random cities. Some of them made sense. The first one was Italy, Texas. The second one was in Texas. Some of them, the last one was in Pennsylvania, some town I never even heard of. I had to Google it to see if it even existed. It's some weird name. Lehighton in Pennsylvania. And there is a town called Lehighton, Lehighton in Pennsylvania. Is how you really pronounce it, but and we went 2,000 miles away. But long story short, but I learned the obedience piece in it to not doubt God on the second one. Because on the second one, he told me several things to do and people to meet, and he's giving me some specifics and some not. But this one was specific, and it's to go to the library, find the clerk, public library, and ask him for a book on witchcraft. I'm like, hey, hey, definitely not God. Something's wrong here. And then he said, but don't, it's not the book. I want you to go to the aisle where the books are. Tell them that. Like, so it, it all transpired. We went, and there it was. And uh, a clerk came up to me and asked us if she could help us. And I said, man, you're going to think this is strange coming from someone like us, but do you have any books on witchcraft? And I did, I, you know, but the fear and the doubt before we got there, I told my wife we were supposed to go. I told her we were supposed to go to the library, but I didn't tell her what. Because a little bit of fear and doubt and, you know, did God really say that? She just looked at me like I was nuts, my wife did. But then she started praying in tongues, I could see it. I'm uh, like, okay, yeah, God. Well, long story short, we've got the lady to the aisle where the books were, because that's what the Lord told us to do. She broke down in tears, crying, guys. Because she was... Born again Christian, he had two kids, one saved, one not. But she was studying her genealogy, an ancestry that's come or whatever, and witches, warlocks, grandparents, uncles, all this, aunts. And she was worried about a generational curse. My wife got a chance to minister to her for a long time. A woman was just in tears in the middle of a public library crying because I asked for a book. So after that, I learned the obedience piece. I was like, okay, God, it made sense. It teaches actually opposite of my Christianity completely. So, been to going to normal Illinois. I'm going to end with this. I haven't even heard of it, but, you know, it's, it is a town. I Google it, of course, but, you know, it sounded, sounded like it'd be a town. But got it in prayer, you know. I've never been there. Don't plan to go back, though. 
why would I, you know, let's, why would I even go there? But we're on a mission to go there, and the Lord said, go a certain way, and um, go through a certain town in Oklahoma, which we did. But on our way to there, we're flying, going 70 miles an hour, all down the highway. My wife looks over, and she said, we passed right by, it flew by, because we're going 75, actually, probably. Um, big billboard signs at Jesus House. Well, it's a homeless ministry. That's what my wife and I have been doing for the past three and a half, almost four years now. The Lord's been dealing with me to expand it, the stuff that we're doing in it, because nobody wants to jack with the broken people. A lot of them don't. Well, you know, the world doesn't. A lot of people in the church don't, and they think they deserve what they got. Well, that's where we're at every Sunday night so far and we're about to we are about to expand it some things are about to change and I couldn't kind of see these pieces moving in place but so don't doubt God where he's sending you what he's telling you to do whether it's Instagram Facebook YouTube websites telling you to do all that just type in Guys, we did it on a shoestring budget, like 850 bucks. Just type in Jesus is alive in America. We pop up. I think that's a pretty good, pretty good feat. I don't know. Seems to be to me, but you know, you can find us that easy. For pretty cheap. Because I just didn't have the resources to do what I what I would have liked to do it. <clears throat> but I will, I'm not gonna doubt God. So, anyhow, we love you. Don't doubt him, what he's telling you to do. Books, whatever, you know. I wrote two, and I'm told me to write some more. And, you know, go look it up, AmazonKDP.com. Everything's free through Amazon. I'll help you set it up, everything. If you're about to write a book. Um, but, anyhow, if you want to email me at JesusIsAliveInAmerica at gmail.com. Go ahead and do that. We can talk, blog with us. Just don't doubt him, guys. You're wired for this. You just haven't exploded yet. That Holy Ghost ruckus, time to just say what you're supposed to say, be what you're supposed to be. If you're a prayer warrior, be that prayer warrior. If you're the knee, be the knee in the body. If you're the hand, be the hand. Whatever you are, and get out of this surreal. Let the enemy think that you can, that portray you as this, you know, less than mentality, because that's real prevalent in this world and in the church. Even like I said, I think I said this already, but God didn't look inside the building to see who was holy and who. You know, who didn't have any sin? He looked for the blood of the lamb on the doorposts. We're all unworthy, guys. So quit trying to be, we're all kings. Yes, we're all peculiar, we're a royal priesthood. But we're all the same. So whatever he's telling you to do, guys, just time to do it. Quit doubting God. Because that's what the enemy wants. Because you kind of get stuck in this mud and rut and stuff. Love you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.